Ms. Kavanaugh, you appeared in our courtroom previously and tested two men as potential fathers of your one-month-old son, Malcolm. Yes, Your Honor. Unfortunately, neither turned out to be his biological father. Yes, Your Honor. Now, today, you believe Malcolm's biological father is a good friend of your mother's, the defendant, Mr. Spence. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Spence, uh, you're a friend of Ms. Kavanaugh's mother and say her daughter made several attempts to have sex with you. Oh. Then, after a lapse in judgment, you admit you did sleep with her. Oh. Now you say there's a chance you could be Malcolm's father. <laughs> Ms. Kavanaugh. Yes, Your Honor. Your mother's friend? Yes, Your Honor. I, I know how bad it sounds. Um, it is bad. Um, I started calling him up, asking for, like, rides, you know, to the grocery store, you know, to get stuff from my house. And, um, so, like, subconsciously, I was kind to try to seduce him. I... Oh. I was wearing inappropriate things around him. And why were you doing this? Um... In all honesty, I was drinking a lot. I was drinking a lot. And I don't know if I did it for, like, you know, a challenge or because I was wanting attention. It was just... Okay. It was just something that I did that was really stupid of me at the time. And so, was he just a friend of your mother's or did you know whether or not he was intimate with your mother? Um, that I do not know of. I just know that they were really good friends. Like, that's all I know. Mr. Spence? Yes, ma'am. Can you enlighten the court on the nature of your relationship with Ms. Kavanaugh's mother? It's like she said, we just friends. We've been friends since the first time we met. Um... So it was never a sexual relationship, ever? No. That was not that believable, but <laughs> I'm gonna move on. <laughs> I'm gonna move on. So... <laughs> <laughs> How did you end up being in the position you were sleeping with your really good friend's daughter? Mm -hmm. It was like she said. Uh, came over a couple of times. She was in inappropriate gear. Uh, the first time, I shunned it off. Second time, I said, hey, watch yourself. Third time, <laughs> it's starting to look good. <laughs> Fourth time, Fourth time, lapse in judgment, and here we are today. Wow. So, how many times were you intimate with her? Once. Just once? Just once. Just what? one time, Ms. Kavanaugh? Your Honor, I do not believe it to be once. I... It was at least twice. But that's just how I remember it. And now, we have Malcolm, one month old. <laughs> And your mother's friend could be his biological father. Yes, Your Honor. So, as you look at Malcolm, do you see Mr. Spence? Any resemblance? Um, I see a little bit. But from being in court previously, I found out that you can't always go on looks at all. Absolutely. <laughs> so, when you found out you were pregnant, did Mr. Spence's name come to mind immediately? Um, no, Your Honor. It really was like... I thought Mr. Bo Mr. Bowles was the dad. Well, after the court, I started thinking, well, he could be a possibility that Mr. Spence is the father. And I texted him, and I asked him, when was the last time we had sex? He told me it was the end of October. So, I... And when was Malcolm born? He was born July 9th. So, when you do the math on that, that's... Yes, Your Honor. ...about the window of conception. Yes, Your Honor. I think we need to hear from your mother. Ma'am, please stand. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, Ms. Kavanaugh. Uh, I have to ask you, how did it feel to learn that your daughter was sleeping with your very good friend? It was very devastating. It, just because the relationship was inappropriate, I felt... Betrayed. Actually, when we were together, like, all in the same room, I noticed them looking at each other a little differently. You did? Yeah. I know... I... And I knew my the gut The woman's pulled... intuition. Exactly. So, I questioned each of them. They each denied that anything had happened. 
Um, I, then basically how I found out, one day Megan was angry with me and we had kind of a little tiff or whatever. It was kind of a big tiff, but when we did, she blurted out that you were right. And I did, I did sleep with Ken. Really? He eventually did uh, come clean and tell me the truth. And he told me the same story that he told you today, Your Honor, that she was coming on to him. Ma'am, I'd like to hear from you now. Please stand as well, yes, and step to the podium. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Hi. Hi. You are? I'm Megan's sister. All right. Okay. And what do you know about this situation, Megan? Okay, I know my mom and him had, like, a best friend connection. And one day, me and Megan went to go meet Ken. It was just me and Megan. And she was, like, getting something from him. I think it was, like, some money or something. And Megan told me, she was like, don't tell mom that I had, like, intimate with him. And then I went to go, because my mom was wondering, asking Megan questions, and Megan was denying it. Mm -hmm. But that's my mother. I'm going to tell my mom. So I come clean. That's how my mom found out, is that it was intimate. It's because of me. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. I do admit that I did come on to him, and it was probably really... A strong come on. You did admit but that in he court. Is, but he is a grown man. He could have yeah. told me no. It goes both ways. What would you like to add, Mr. Smith? Uh, first of all, I didn't mean for this to happen. Yes, I got weak. Yes, I am a man. Yes, I could have told you no. I told you no thrice. Oh. For as the baby being mine, I don't know. That's why I'm here to clear this up. So, Mr. Spence, let me ask you this. Are you in a relationship? I'm married. Oh. oh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now I do understand why you're hoping he's not your child. That's not what I'm hoping. What are you hoping? I hope he... I hope for the truth. If he is my son, like I told her, I'm gonna be there. Why exactly do you have doubts? My doubt is, first of all, it was only once. Um... The window of conception that she describes. I'm Baby there. born in July. I'm there, yeah. I'm, so you you I'm within in the year. window of conception. I, I'm in you don't year. dispute that. that. I do not dispute All right. that's why I'm here. Right. That is why I'm here. Do you have any knowledge as to whether or not she was sleeping with other people during yes. that time? Yes, she told me. Oh, so she told you? Yes. What did she say? I'm sleeping with other people. I got a boyfriend. Oh. <laughs> Which was Mr. Bowles at the time, Your Honor. Understood. Yeah. But we also know that there was Mr. Scott, too. Mm-hmm. Yes, Your Honor. Yeah, he's been like tested, and he's here. So, describe your relationship with Mr. Scott. Um, I was hanging out at the pool one day. I met him. He told me he had a girlfriend and kids and all this other stuff. So, we didn't do anything the very first night, you know. We just drank a little bit, got to know each other. The second night, we hung out, and yes, we did have intercourse. Oh, wow. And that went on for, like, maybe a week or two. And we wore condoms every single time, except for one time. We got very intoxicated, and that's how that night happened. And so this was also during the window of conception? Yes, Your Honor. So, Jerome, I'm ready to meet Mr. Scott. Bring you up to the witness stand next to the judge. All right. Hello, Mr. Scott. Thank you for joining us today. Nice to meet you. We understand that you had a sexual relationship with Ms. Kavanaugh. Yes, ma'am. And it was during the window of conception. Do you agree with that? Yes, ma'am. You were not using protection? I use protection every time. I don't, I don't recall, you know, not using protection. So you don't recall. Now, she says there was an instance when you did not, right? Yes, Your Honor. And you say there was no instance? No, ma'am. I, I strongly, you know, I don't believe that, you know, Malcolm is mine. You don't? I don't. Have you seen a picture of him? Yes, ma'am. I mean, I seen the picture. She sent me a picture. My mom, my mom seen the baby and said the baby looked like me. I mean, this is my baby picture. Let me see. This is your baby picture. Yes, ma'am. Oh, there we go. Along with 
Malcolm's baby picture. Your mother says when she saw the picture, he looks like you. Yes, ma'am. You don't see it? I mean, I see the jaws and the head, but you can't really just go by the, you know, the, the looks. Have you met Malcolm? Have you bonded with him, been a part of his life? No, ma'am. I mean, I'm just not hearing that, you know, she had a baby a couple weeks ago. When she, you know, she texted me and said, I, I need you to take a DNA test. I had a baby on such and such. Your Honor, the she first time I told him I was pregnant was when I first found out. And he told me there's no way that it's his, no way. And we never talked after that, ever. Until a week or two ago when I found my old phone trying to look for people that, you know, I was sexually involved with. Oh. And I found his number. And so... These are the last two possibilities, Miss Kavanaugh. There's one more, Your Honor. Oh. Your Honor, when I said I was highly intoxicated, I was, I was going through a lot. I was going to work drunk, going... Yeah, we was drinking. Yeah, everywhere. If something bad happened to me, Your Honor, I would want to drink. Something good happened to me, Your Honor, I would want to drink. So... Let's get one thing straight. Mm -hmm. You know you can't drink your problems away. Yes, I have And you see out. that. Yes. It creates because more you, problems. You didn't drink any problems away. You just created yeah, it creates more problems. A lot. And since you are a mother to a brand new innocent baby, this court's gonna require, no matter what the result is, that you get some counseling and you get some help as it relates to that drink. You yes, understand? Because you can't do that. I know. That's no way to live. Mr. Scott, I gotta go back to you because at the point you found out Miss Kavanaugh was pregnant, how were you notified? I mean, she texted me at like, it was like five, six in the morning. <laughs> she just said uh, she needed me to take a DNA test. Then, you know, I agreed to it. And here we go right here. And so, if Malcolm is your biological child, are you ready to step up? What are your yes, intentions? Yes, ma'am. I'm ready. You know, I take full responsibility. If the baby's mine, I'll be the... I mean, there's no more I can you know, say. It'll be Jerome, my baby. I think it's time for the results. <laughs> you okay? These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Kavanaugh v. Spence Scott, when it comes to the paternity of one-month-old Malcolm Kavanaugh, Mr. Scott, you are not his father. Are you ready for the next result? You okay? Hey. I'm just nervous. Cause I know I made mistakes and I can't change them. It's okay. All you can do is go forward. <sighs> Miss Kavanaugh, you said Mr. Spence and you were best friends. How will this affect your friendship if, in fact, he is the biological father of your grandson? I mean, at this point, when I first found out, I was upset just because they were so dishonest with me. But at this point, I mean, I want her to have help. I love my daughter, regardless. And he's a great person. I'm sure he'd be a great father. It's not the ideal situation or whatever, but Malcolm needs a dad, and Megan, you know, needs someone to help her raise her son. I'm sorry it wasn't here. That's all right. In the case of Kavanaugh versus Spence Scott, when it comes to the paternity of one-month-old Malcolm Kavanaugh, Mr. Spence, you
In the case of Kavanaugh versus Spence Scott, when it comes to the paternity of one-month-old Malcolm Kavanaugh, Mr. Spence, you are not his father. It's okay. It's okay. Miss Kavanaugh, we back here again. Yes, Your Honor. I know this isn't where you wanted to be. It's okay. I never wanted to be this person, Your Honor. You know what, look, look. Yes, you've done some things you're not proud of. I can't. Moving <laughs> on, as I say in this courtroom all the time, <laughs> right? Yes, Your Honor. And your baby's counting on you. Mom, sister, I commend you for just standing with her. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. We're, we're so close, no matter what, nobody can stop that. And I want you to do what you need to do. Yes. All right? I wish you all the best of luck. We do have counseling resources. We want you to take advantage of them. Court is adjourned. Mr. Patterson, you opened your case today to prove that you are four-year-old Demarcus Patterson Jr.'s biological father. You named him and have cared for your junior since birth and are furious the defendant now claims another man is his father. Is this correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Knight, you testify that even though your son has Mr. Patterson's name, it does not change the fact that you are unsure he is DeMarcus Jr.'s biological father and another man could be. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Patterson, you testify you've been there since day one. Please explain. I've been there since birth, you know, since he came out the womb, since he entered his world, when the doctor first you know, held him up and finally gave him to him. I witnessed him just completely quit crying and looked me dead in my eyes. And that's at that moment, I knew I became someone's father. So at that moment, like all the doubts that we had before, I just knew like they were just out the window and just, it was gonna leave us a happy family, but... But it moment, didn't happen that way. Not exactly. And when that baby came into the world, you were there to receive him. You gave him your name. Yes, Your Honor. But now there's doubt as it relates to the mother. So, Ms. Knight, you contend that Mr. Patterson is not DeMarcus's biological father? I let DeMarcus know when I got pregnant that there was a possibility that I could be pregnant by someone else. So you were honest from the start? From the beginning, yes. Do you remember this conversation, Mr. Patterson? Uh, yes, Your Honor, in a way. When she first told me she was pregnant, that's when we was like... I guess, you, I guess you could say doing the house hopping thing, because like in order- Doing the what? The house hopping thing, because when she moved out of her parents' house, she ain't had nowhere to go, so let her live there too. I mean, that's how we started our relationship. We were together every day since then. DeMarcus ended up cheating on me within the t time we were together, and I ended up leaving with Ladarius, uh, with the alleged father, and um, basically we didn't work out at all. So I called DeMarcus to let him know, hey, I could be pregnant, by Ladarius and you. And DeMarcus was like, well, I want to be with you. And that's where it went. That day that she left, I ain't hear from her for a month or two. So wait, she you're just... saying she just left the house and you didn't hear from her for a month or two? Yeah, I was supposed to pick up from work, but my grandma made me feel worse about it because she was like, she knew she was too fast for me anyways, but... <gasps> I'm just going by what we're going Miss Knight, where did you this. go? Well, what is Never going on no. here? I decided what? to leave because I wasn't over the fact that he cheated on me with this female. So, yeah, I did that. But I found out I was pregnant while I was with Ladarius. Okay, so, I right want to go step by step because I want to understand. When you left, you ended up with Mr. Siegler. Right. Which is the other possible father. Right. We ended up having protective sex that night and then we ran out of condoms and while we were doing it, I told him to go ahead and get me pregnant. That's what I told him. And as soon as I found out I was pregnant, I called DeMarcus and let DeMarcus know, it's a po I'm pregnant right now, and it's a possibility that it's Ladarius' baby or your baby. DeMarcus told me to come home. So, so you got her. back together with Mr. Patterson. Because I love me and Ladarius were like oil and water, and we could not do it. So I told and begged DeMarcus. I didn't beg him. I said, DeMarcus, come get me. And DeMarcus pulled up in, in the car and was like, where's your stuff? He carried my stuff on his back and got in the car, and we went on about our way. Him knowingly knowing that I could be pregnant by somebody else, he was okay with the situation. 
Bush. And at this point, you're testifying that you believed he was the father based upon the time frame. I believed it was a possibility. So take me to the day you actually gave birth. Who was there? What happened? Demarcus was there. He was there when my water broke. We woke him up, said, baby, my water broke. Time to go to the hospital. He hopped up. All right, let's do this. So we was in the hospital that whole day. Had the baby. He didn't get to cut the umbilical cord because the doctor took it upon himself to cut it. Yeah, he did But do that. that was it. When he had the baby, Demarcus looked over, said, that's my baby. We, named, we ain't naming him no Christian. We naming him Demarcus Patterson. Did you say that, Mr. That ain't exactly how it happened. How'd it go? <laughs> when I looked the baby in the eyes, I was like, dang, you know, he just completely just be, be quiet, just quit crying everything like he was at peace. Then I looked at her, and that's when the doctors left the room. She was like, what name should we give him? I was like, oh, no. Then she said, I always wanted a junior. And I was like, yeah, do that. And then that's when the name came about, Demarcus LaTerrius Patterson Jr. Well, when you tell this woman I've always wanted a junior... He ain't say that. He I ain't really get to pick the name, because remember, it's always up to the woman to pick the name. Please. Don't pick whatever. Demarcus said, I don't care what you think, this is my baby, and we're naming him Demarcus LaTerrius Patterson Jr. If and she named him said, Demarcus yes, LaTerrius Patterson Jr., well, you, you know definitely had to this. agree to that. So you signed the birth certificate. Yes, Your Honor, I signed the birth certificate. Willingly. Yes, Your Honor. Without a doubt at that time, you went on and signed it. Yes, Your Honor. I mean, I was gonna do the DNA test. Okay, And I right. looked at him, and then that's when I threw the DNA test out of the picture. At that moment, DeMarcus said, that is my baby. His name is gonna be DeMarcus Latarius Patterson Jr. And I don't care what y'all gotta say, and that's what it was. So, but, okay, but if you know the real truth, and you know that he might not be the biological father, why give in to the name and name this child after him because knowing me, that there's a love, possibility? I was in love with him. Mm. We were together all the time. I mean, he demanded it that that's what he wanted. He denied the DNA test. So I'm like, you know what? Sure. We're gonna roll with this. Let's go with it. <laughs> My heart, I so solemnly wanted it to be Demarcus's baby. Right. And in your young mind, this is how you clean up this whole mess. And so, in the last four years, has Mr. Patterson been there for DeMarcus? He, he's been there. He has. Does DeMarcus Jr. call Mr. Patterson daddy? Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's so <laughs> handsome. <laughs> At what point did you realize that it wasn't all working out, that, that it really could potentially be the other man's child? Well, it was a conversation between me and DeMarcus we had often. I mean, DeMar DJ turned about three months and I looked at him one time and I was like, wow, he kind of looked like Ladarius. Oh, so you all were open about this? Yes, we were always open. He, we would take rides to the gas station. He'd show me pictures of Ladarius. Like, you sure this ain't that? You sure this ain't I ain't gonna lie. First and we I were like, open about up. it, all very open about it. I started seeing his ears slant out and I was like, hold up, you know? Just like, I don't know, though. But he's four now. Are you right. now? So I look at and it the now, conversation just... about DNA tests is not, this is not the first time I brought it up. I don't see the appointments. No one wants to help me with half the payment. Nah, I help so, you with that. Now, it's just, I know you're when... evil. If they say that I don't get to take my name off or have a DNA test, you'll put me on child support if you could. I'm look, being real. you I know it's a possibility you know that you're the father, and Ladera yeah. knows the possibility that's the father, and ain't none of y'all giving me nothing anyway, so you think you don't deserve to I go on? I this it? first pair of sneakers. I buy them everything. You I can't mean, say yeah, when I ask, when I ask you, when I ask Demarcus to do something, he will. When I asked, but the only reason why he stopped doing the things, like, he used to come in and just do it without me having to ask. But because I chose to allow Felicia and the L- L- in his life, DeMarcus told me, I'm going to go ahead and take a step back and let the L- L- Darius step in since now, that. I ain't say that now. Yes, I said you that, did. I was just talking. Now, he still oh, say Felicia, that. Felicia, hold on. You gestured and said you decided to let Felicia, that is your witness here. My, my god, mom. That's Mr. Sigler's mother. Right. So that's the other guy's mother. Right. And so you said Miss Sigler is your godmother. Right. So the other possible father is your god brother? Right. Oh. Ladarius. Why are you making this look bad? Lord. You decided to let her and the other guy in DeMarcus Jr.'s life. life as well. So you didn't want either guy to be left out until you knew for sure? I guess. I mean... That's crazy. I mean, it's... Look, my god mama ended up sending me pictures of it, and me and DeMarcus actually was in the same vehicle at the same time when she sent this one picture. And I looked at DeMarcus, he looked at me and was like, yo, that, that's DeMarcus, and that's you DJ submitted family. that picture to the court. Right. Let's take a look at that. This is a picture of... Miss Sigler as a baby. It's the other one. That didn't do much for me. The other one did. And this is DeMarcus Jr. Right. 
That's the one she sent me, and me and D Demarcus sat in the car and was like, that's DJ. And when you saw those pictures, that's you when felt I, like... when I really started letting him in DJ's life. That's when Mama came and got him every other day when she can or when I needed her to. He'll go pick him up, drop him off over there. All that. It's, we are a big, happy family. Oh, I don't know why he pretended. <laughs> Oh, so this is, this is a whole village. <laughs> hey, to be honest, No, I'm though, serious. Hey. We eat this to get, as a family and all. All of you all right. together. We never had no problem. The reason why, in my head, I strongly wanted DeMarcus to be the bi biological father was because they told me I got pregnant August 28th through the 2nd, or the 3rd of um, September. I was with DeMarcus August 28th, but by the 2nd of um, September, I was with Ladarius, so I didn't know. I honestly oh, did not yeah, know. So it was crazy. that soon after. Don't act like it's crazy. You knew. Before we go any further, I think it's time I hear from Mr. Sigler. Jerome, can you please escort Mr. Sigler into the courtroom? Yes. Thank you for joining us today. Pleasure. As you are aware, we are discussing the paternity of Demarcus Patterson, Jr., a young boy who has Mr. Patterson's name but could potentially have your DNA. Yes, ma'am. Do you believe you are DeMarcus Jr.'s biological father? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. You do? Yes, Your Honor. Why do you believe that? All right. In the midst of me and Kaylin having dealings or intimacy, I, I was the one who told her she was pregnant. Oh. And when I told her she was pregnant, she said, well, if you feel like that, take me to the clinic. So I did. So when we got back from that situation, we had conflict. She like, it could possibly be his. It could possibly be yours. So therefore now, like she say, all in water. You weren't a part of the pregnancy. No, ma'am. You weren't there for the birth. No, ma'am. So when did you learn that you were, in fact, potentially DJ's biological father? Okay, prior to that picture right there, I seen him probably a week before that picture. And he was three months old when I first met DeMarcus. He was three months. So I did gang attachment to him as well, but I understood the situation. They come down to, is this baby? Mm -hmm. We want to know, he want to know, he need to know, we need to know. Before it get any farther, get out of hand, I don't want him growing up because he do know both of us. He do look at both of us like fathers. Does he call you daddy too? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> so the child is calling father, two men daddy. Yeah, I mean, I, it is what it is. The Marcus, I don't care how he acted. After this, when you find out he ain't that, he ain't going nowhere. She thanked that, man. Listen, I want to know from Mr. Sigler, what are your hopes, sir? Do you hope DeMarcus Jr. is your biological child? The love that I have for him is the same love that he has for me. Mm -hmm. I know one thing about this young man. If don't nobody else love me, he gonna love me. And so, Mr. Patterson, I have to ask you, how do you feel knowing that your son is calling another man daddy, too? Be honest, I used to think about it hard back in the days, but it's her mess. She got to clean it up. That's what we're here for today, you know? It's all of your mess. Yeah. Thank you. Because if you're not the father, this four-year-old young boy has your name. And if you are the father, he's still calling Mr. Sigler daddy, too and would presumably miss his presence in his life if Mr. Sigler decided he no longer wanted to be a part of his life. So this is a tangled web here. And DJ is caught up in it. With that said, I think it's time we get the results. Jerome. Before I open this envelope, are you ready for this? Have you prepared yourself? No, ma'am. So I'm you ready. being honest, Mr. Sigler. I'd rather step out. <laughs> you just really feel that strongly that you want the baby to be yours. Yeah. I won't make you wait any longer. <laughs> These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Patterson versus Knight, pertaining to whether Mr. Patterson or Mr. Sigler is the biological father of four-year-old Demarcus Patterson, Jr.
It has been determined by this court. The biological father is Mr. Sigler. <laughs> you are DJ's biological father, Mr. Sigler. What do you feel right now? Hurt. Could have been bought. It could have been avoided. I love that little boy right there. I know you're going to be happy. You can bring him out right now, you're going to run straight to me. Mr. Patterson. Are you all right? Oh, yes, ma'am. I know this is hard. I'm hurt about it. I looked at him as mine, but... Hey, at the end of the day, I'm happy for him. He figured out who his real dad is, you know? I know. That is mighty big of you. He still my kid, you know, in a way, because I watched him and I helped him develop you know. as a Well, you child, are his you know? legal father, that's for sure. You're on the birth certificate. Yeah, I'm his legal, yeah. Are you going to go back to your home state and address the legal issues surrounding this? Or is it your intention that you are going to leave your name on the birth certificate and remain his legal father? No, yeah, I don't want to do something like that. That's his father. He deserves the right to have his name on the birth certificate, alter his name, change his name, whatever he wants to. You young men, <laughs> you all making me proud today. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> and Miss Knight... What we have to do going forward for this baby, it is very serious. Do you call him DeMarcus or do you call him DJ? You call him DJ. I call him Damani. I'm not naming him Damani. <laughs> oh, Lord. But, look, we're doing so well. Let's not start here now. 